everyone. Welcome. Let's go ahead and get started. And as people come in, um, just say hi and um, say hi to me and let's and tell me if you can hear me okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit. Um, so I've been, I hope everybody has had a great um, week since the last time we talked and we're ready to go in our studios once again. I know I spent the last weekend catching up on a few uh, mystery, uh, mystery that I've been working with on. Um, my um, friend, fellow CI, uh, Michelle Hyatt, is doing this wonderful uh, mystery right now um, called Best in the 60s. And it uses the Star 60 tool, and she's making these beautiful looking blocks they're triangular shape, um, and we are making them you practicing the different techniques of the tools. And she names each of the blocks after 60 songs. It is so cool and it's so much fun. I mean, really, really enjoying this. Um, so I, I, if you're on, let me know what you've been up to, what projects you've been working on. Um, I'm hoping you are starting new projects or looking to finish some projects. I know January, some people like to call this their UFO time to catch up. Um, I know this coming weekend I'm going to continue. I have two more blocks to catch up with on her thing because she sends out another one on Friday, so that makes two. And um, I have some other ones. I have some block of the month. I'm doing the Journeys block of the month that Studio 180 Design is doing with Stitch Stitch in Heaven um, store, and there's another one I'm doing. I'm Oh, I'm going to be doing Nebula. That's the one. I haven't started it yet. That's why it's not in my head. I'm going to be doing Nebula with the Star 60 tool. I'm not going to be using their tools. It, I'm going to go ahead and tuckerize it and make it possible that way. So I'm thinking next week we may start talking about the Star 60 and working with some of the shapes that are in the, the nebula. And I think that would be a great topic to start working through the new tool and get some ideas of what you can do with it out there. Um, so let, I'm hoping you can hear me okay and I'm going to go ahead and get started. This week we're going to discuss the basic um unit the four patch everybody knows how to make the four patch it's the one of the easiest things to start with but the, the four patch can be very picky at times um, it could be either not quite right the edges are just quite lined up um, or they're just not, it's not square. Well, Deb was tired of that after making so many blocks, and she got ahead and she designed a tool called the four pet. It makes my just so much nicer. Oh, oh hi, Connie. How are you? Um, welcome to the group uh, to the um, video. So I want to talk about this tool. I think it's one of the must tools in our tool arsenal, besides the Tucker trimmer, the four patch, the four. Uh, I've got four patch on my brain too. Uh, the wing clipper and the squared square. So those are the ones I think if you're a beginner and want to start with the tools are the tools you should start with. And I'm designing patterns to go with those tools to teach you different things. And sound is breaking up. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm hoping it's not my mic. So I'm going to move my mic around and see if that helps. Um, let me know if it gets better. Um, so what I want to do now is go through and if you 
and walk you through what it takes to make these four patches. I think they go a little bit faster doing the method she has done with the strip piecing. Um, so um, today I'm gonna we're gonna solve all your problems with this tool. And if you are a fan of the Star Studio 1A tools uh, of being oversized and trimming down, this is the tool that will help you also. The, she does she doesn't leave you unhappy with this tool. Um, so let's go down to my desk here and see what we got here. I'm going to pull this to the side. Carefully move that out of the way. Okay. I hope the sound is getting better as we do this. Okay. So, um, oh, you can see my screen now. Yeah, cool. Um, this is one of my latest blocks. Um, part patched, um, patched um, spinner. I couldn't remember the name. <laughs> it's been one of those days. And it calls for the four patch. It's a two different color four patch, but it, they're all made the same way. We're just going to be, in this one, you're going to have one, one color, one strip, one color, and the other strips are going to be in different color and they'll line up the same way. Thank you, Connie, for letting me know. Okay, so with the four patch um, square up, you definitely get a tool, um, your instructions as usual. Um, this pattern works with whole sizes and half size increments. So you'll have up to 12 different half inch, from a half inch to six inch um, finish sizes. Um, the lines on this tool line up exactly in the center on the four patch in the center of where it should be. And I'll go through how you line these up in a few minutes. Okay. And let's see, um, there are three sections of this tool. And I'm hoping you can see it pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it right there. I think you can see it pretty good. Right here on this side is the um, sizes that you'll need for strips. So she put it right on the tool for you, just like she did on the squared squared. But you can also find them um, on the um, instructions also. Now these are quarter inch um, sizes and in the instructions you can get eighth of an inch but I prefer the eight, um, quarter inch sizes. I like that little extra to trim down. Okay on these two sides here you have your whole half sizes and you have your whole sizes. So depending on what size of block you're making, such as a um, four, uh, so say we're making four and a half inch unfinished blocks, you're going to follow this, um, yes, this side here first. The whole, um, you're going to use the half inch side for that. And like I said, I'm going to show you how to use this tool. And again, you can recognize the tool by the symbol on the um, tool here. So, how do we make these? So, what we're going to do is you're going to start by determining what you want. You want a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. Like I suggested, it's better to take a quarter of an inch. It's easier to cut, for one thing and or the eighth of an inch. In this block here that we're going to make, we're going to be making a four inch finished block. So it'd be four and a half unfinished. So in the instructions and on our tool, you'll again look at your instructions if you're tuckerizing. You want a four inch block, a trim size of a four and a half, which is the uncut, and your four and four a uh, half um, 
for the strips, you want to have two and three fourths. And the underneath here is the eighth inch. And you, if you wanted to do the eighth, it'd be two and five eighths. Myself, I did two and three fourths. So we're going to remember that two and three fourths because when we um, start sub cutting, cutting, we're going to use that as our line up for that tool. Oh, okay. And I forgot the ruler for that. Hang on one second and let me get with the tool uh, ruler. We're going to need a ruler to cut. Okay, that was quick. You always think you're prepared and you forget something. Okay, so what you need to do to get started is to cut your strips. So you're going to need one strip, you're going to need two strips of two and three fourths, opposite colors, um, and you're going to line them up with right sides together and you're going to stitch a line. There we go. You're, so you're going to go ahead and stitch the seam line a quarter of an inch all the way down like you would do for a Le Moines star. It's just a strip set. You're going to make a couple strip sets. And then you're going to press. You can press. I, I chose to press through the dark here and we're, that's what we did. I did with this one. So what you, if you're using a whole strip, a full width of a strip, two and three quarters by the width, what I do is I either cut, make two of those two strips or I cut it in half. And you're going to then to sandwich them together. And you're going to place one down on the bottom, and then light is up on top, and you're going to reverse the other one so they nest together, just like so. And those are nice nested. I can show you what they look like. See, you can see where the seams meet up perfectly right there. So that is your first step. Lay with the mat down, depending if you're right-handed or left-handed, you're going to then subcut your units two and three-fourths. So you place your ruler on your cutting mat. And what I do is I try to find the angle. So if I want two and three-fourths, I line up my strip along my um, the numbers that or the lines that run across it would be like two and a half along that sewing line right there and I will line it all up make my subcut for the left this is the left hand side for the right handed side you're going to do the same thing you're going to line it all up I'm trying to get this in here for you. And do your subcut again. Now you're going to keep these together. So once you get your subcuts, just leave them on your mat. Just move on to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Then get a paper plate or something to transfer them or make these nice Lori Holt boards that I like I did here. And Put them on there so you don't you don't pull your units apart because we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a good quarter of an inch on with these units. So that's what you get to there. We're, remember to subcut, keep them together. If you have to pin, pin them together so you don't they don't come apart. 
because you're going to find your, your unit's going to be nice and neat if you keep them together and they won't be um, on a, um, come apart from each other. So the next step here is to, like I, I said, sew them apart, sew them, and you can chain piece these and you're going to press them open. Now, when you do that, you're going to press them open. Now, you'll notice on this one, I have pressed and made a swirl in the back to lay it flat. So this one I haven't done that because so, I wanted to show you what I do so what I do is I grab the seam and I notice that this color here is on top, this side here. So what I do is I just carefully hold both sides of that seam and give it a little twist and it pops open. Another way to do it is take your seam ripper, rip those stitches out real quick, but don't remember to don't take the the sewing line out either. So once you get that done, you can take that to your sewing machine or your sewing machine, your ironing board. I'm just tumbling over words today. Wow. And press that down. And that's how you nest those seams. Put them in a swirl. Again, I look at that. I look at it, the unit. I notice what is on top. This is the one I want to go towards me when I pop it. So you're going to just go pop it open. Just twist it a little bit. It, it'll pop open. Now, depending on your, your size of your seam, I use a 2.5 on my sewing, my Bernina, and for the stitch length, so it makes it easier to pop those a little bit better. And I just, again, we press those down to make it nice and flat. So, now we are ready to um, trim. So, we're going to demonstrate how to trim this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our, unit, our, four, our four patch square up tool and we're going to know, we're going to be using the four and a half. Actually, we're going to want the four four inch on um, we want the half inch side on this unit so which is uh, right underneath where our um, size of our strips are and we're going to look for the four inch it has a circle on it I'm hoping you can see that let me pull this up let it get it there it has one right there that needs it's just not there it goes it's focusing now and you'll notice that there's dashed lines here and here that's going to line up on your seams right there so that four inch circle right there we're going to line up on our unit just like so Try not get in your camera way, in the camera's way, and lining this up. There we go. And we're going to take the rotary cutter, and we are going to. This is for right-handed. Go up and across. And look at that, Sherry. I'm doing it right-handed again. Okay, that is the first cut. Now we're going to rotate this all the way around. And we're going to place this again on our mat. And it's all lined up once again. And we're going to go ahead and make our second cut. Now we've lined it up on the four and a half on this side where we previously trimmed. And we're going to hold that firmly. 
go up and across. Look at that, we've got a nice trimmed unit. That's how a four patch should look like. And not, it shouldn't look all disabled and maybe a quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch inside here or the eighth of an inch out this way. We want it nice and have nice straight seams. So that makes it easier for when we piece this to another piece in a block. So let me show you for left-handed. For left-handed, we're going to place the unit so it's going um, vertical on us. And we're going to put that four inch right there in the middle, right in that point here. Our dashed lines are going down those seam lines all the way across. And we're going to trim the first side. Pick up our tool, rotate it all the way around, lay it back down. We're going to take that four and a half, lay it on that trim line we just made, and line it up just like so. And we have our four patch all ready to go. Well, so we have our two four patches nice, ready to go. That's how easy that those units are to make with this method. And you can make a whole bunch at a, all the time. And it doesn't take you a lot of time to make these and trim them down. I rather take the time and the little extra fabric and do the the little extras of trimming down to make my units and make my quilt a little sharper. That's why I like about the Studio 180 design tools. Um, so that that's one way to do it. Now, if you wanted to do a unit that was three colored, four colored. Um, this is a three colored that I've made here. We've got two colors that are the same here and two are the different. What you're going to do is you're going to take the two colors that are the same. You're going to cut two of those. And you're going to cut one of the other colors and you're going to press them to the matching strips. Flip them back over and then nest them just like we have talked about before and you're going to do your sub cuts to make your units for four pa uh, for the two different four different colors you're just going to have four different colored strips so you're going to take two of the different colors here and put two of the different colors here so that's what that what's being done here. Um, okay, do we have any questions? So like I said, they make them fast and easy. You can tuckerize any pattern out there that uses these tools um, in their um, pattern. All you have to do is add a quarter of an inch to the finished unit size and trim down. Okay, doesn't look like we have anything else. So, so I'm thinking next week we're going to talk about the Star 60 tool. It's one of the tools that I've really been playing with lately. Like I said in the beginning, uh, since I've been using it for practicing for the, the journey to Nebula and um, playing with the Michelle Hyatt pa pattern that I'm doing, the mystery she's doing, all the, based on the Star 60 tool, it is so easy to use 
and I just want to walk, each week we're going to walk through some of the um, shapes of the, pat, uh, the tool um, and show you how some of the units are sewn together and when to trim and when not to trim. So that's what I'm going to be doing over the several next weeks, a um, couple weeks, and we'll play with that tool for a little bit and see where we go because I'll be starting my journey in Nebula hopefully this weekend and we'll be, um, I'm going to be doing a start with a star 60 tool. So that is it for this week. Um, if you have any questions or would like to have something demonstrated on how to use it, um, please um, e put it in the comments here. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, this week I'm getting ready to um, go ahead. I'm teaching um, my feather light flight pattern um, starting tomorrow for Sue Pellin's group and it's gonna be a full day class um, so that is the rest of my week getting ready for my rest of my day getting ready for that and doing that um, and then I'm gonna be doing some catch-up um, so I enjoy being here and I hope to see you next week and as we start our little venture into the star 60 tool see you next week bye